Hello Seattle, this is Ian Affleck Ash, candidate for Seattle City Council, position 9 at large, with today's video blog on littering in Seattle. So, Seattle, why do we litter? Is it too inconvenient to find a disposal site or a can? Present litter in the area? Unclear markings on our plastic products? Or a lack of care? Would you believe that it's all the above? Seattle has a goal to recycle 70% of our solid waste by 2022, claims Seattle Public Utilities on their Public Garbage and Recycling Cans page, hosted on Seattle.gov. They say they're going to meet that goal with over 800 cans across the city. Keep in mind, this is a mixed number of garbage and recycling cans. Over 800 for 66,000 people. The criteria location must meet to be eligible for one or both of these cans make plenty of sense. Most of the rationale for not hosting these cans, however, doesn't. If any of these criteria are met, the location will be ineligible for either can. Number one, the location is within the vicinity of a business already servicing a private can. My rebuttal, not all citizens are allowed to use these cans or think that they are allowed to use these cans. Number two, the location is within a park area serviced by the Seattle Parks Department. This one makes total sense, actually. Number three, the location is within the vicinity of a public transportation stop. Well, big one here, these cans are often overflowing and often used to publicly dump bags of waste. Number four, the location is within a residential neighborhood. Well, I got a big rebuttal here. Due to the defunding of district councils in Seattle, which cost $1.2 million for nine city staffers to organize meetings and answer questions, according to the Stranger's July 14th article by Heidi Groover, and the lack of action from the recently founded but not yet moving Community Involvement Commission, the ability to communicate cleanup efforts and neighborhood-funded trash cans within a community has been greatly diminished. Number five, if the location is intended of the sole use of adjacent businesses, this is their wording, my rebuttal, businesses are everywhere, and their trash is in our alleys. Alleys that are uncared for alleys that are dimly lit, and alleys that reek of trash. The trash is next to our businesses, and we do nothing about it, because we think of it as their business, their problems. Another fine example of the bystander effect, and how it can ruin public spaces. Now, here's a big problem. On that same page, public garbage and recycling cans, due to budget constraints, Seattle Public Utilities is not installing additional cans at this time. Well, we're a growing city. According to recent estimates about new data from the U.S. Census Bureau, the Seattle metropolitan area is gaining about 1,100 people every single week. Our new population needs places to put trash when they're out and about or just around their neighborhood. And what we have isn't cutting it. We must develop a better solution for our trash. Because where there's litter, people litter more. Which brings me directly to my next point. Present litter in the area. From the research article by P. Wesley Schultz and Stephen R. Stein, titled Litter in America, National Findings and Recommendations, hosted by Keep America Beautiful, they determined over the course of their study that people are more likely to litter into a littered environment and less likely to litter into a clean one. Here's an excerpt from the study. One of the strongest contributors to littering is the prevalence of existing litter. Consistently in our results, we find that litter begets litter. Individuals are much more likely to litter into littered environments, as seen in the observational studies, and they are less likely to report littering into beautified environments from the telephone survey. 
These findings strongly support the need for ongoing cleanup and beautification efforts. People view trashy areas as being okay for trash. We need to fix this perception by cleaning as much as possible as often as possible and providing new places to dispose of and sort waste. We must make sure citizens are better able to sort their waste into what we can and can't recycle. We can do better. We have unclear markings on our products. How do we know what to recycle? Specifically, what exact numbers in those little recycling triangles on our plastic packaging are we allowed to recycle? Sure, you can check out the .pdf flyer available from Seattle Public Utilities' Where Does It Go webpage available in the description but it doesn't mention specifically what numbers, and that's an incredible failure and oversight on the city's part. Who wants to look at the chart every time they're going to recycle? Instead, I propose we mark clearly on our recycling bins the exact accepted numbers in those little recycling triangles on our plastics. Now, there's a lack of care. Ashley Schiller sums up the litter of recycling fantastically in an October 25, 2010 article on Earth 911. We still have a long way to go in expanding curbside programs to everyone. Facilitating discussion about local recycling programs will put pressure on cities to offer such programs. Those who live in a city without curbside recycling can be more vocal with local leaders. Here's the thing. Recycling is free in Seattle, so why aren't we doing it? It's even free to take your recycling to either of our transfer sites at the North Station on the Wallingford side of Stone Ave, Stoneway, or the South Station in South Park. Why are we littering our recyclables? Well, the answer is that it's not from households. Mostly it's from recycling generated by pedestrians from their comings and goings about our neighborhood. The same is true of non-recyclable waste. They just don't care enough to put their waste into a trash can. How can we make people care? Well, we can stress the importance of cleanliness that by doing their part, they are helping our wonderful city be more beautiful and orderly. We can put up better thanks for throwing away or recycling at this location messages near our cans. We can show people cleaning up in our civic media and even encourage films and broadcast media to do the same. Together, we can make a real difference in cleaning up Seattle. Links to my Twitter and email are in the description, along with all the links I referenced today. Please like and favor this video, leave a comment or question down below, and share it to everyone you know. As always, thanks for watching, and have a better day. The previous video message was sponsored by Ian Affleck-Ash for City Council. Thank you.